Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, Mark Twain always said that history doesn't repeat itself, but it does tend to rhyme. And this isn't exactly like the Powder River Basin scandal uh, during the Reagan administration uh, when uh, James Watt turned a blind eye to the under sale of $100 million worth of resources at the Powder River Basin. I was the chairman of the Oversight Committee uh, in this committee back then, and I commissioned the GAO report that brought back all of the findings on that scandal, which ultimately led to the resignation of James Watt. Um, I know this didn't happen on your watch, uh, uh, Secretary Kemp Vaughan. I appreciate that. But this is a blistering, scalding indictment uh, of the Bush administration oversight of the Department of Interior. Uh, this is uh, something that is a stain on the Department of Interior and its operations. Um, uh, Mr. Devaney, I congratulate you on your work. Um, Chevron did not agree to allow any of their employees to be interviewed by you. Is that correct? Uh, it's fair to say, uh, Mr. Congressman, that at some point Chevron obtained counsel for five of their employees, and then we began negotiations, we being the Department of Justice and our investigators, to try to get those employees in for an interview, and it never happened. It never happened. So Chevron has stonewalled this investigation. And oh. Shell, Shell has refused to allow uh, one of their employees to be interviewed. Is that correct? I think he's a former employee and he was exercising, uh, as everybody has, their right to uh, remain silent. Now, are you saying he's doing that as an individual, or is that Shell as well? I think he, I think he, he was he was a Shell employee when the events occurred. He is no longer a Shell. My understanding is he's no longer a Shell employee, and uh, he did not afford himself the opportunity to talk to us. Are the are the Chevron employees are still at Chevron? I believe they are. So, are they doing? Uh, are they refusing to testify in conjunction with legal advice from Chevron? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, no, I think, I think, first of all, let me uh, be very specific about Chevron. Um, we asked, we gave subpoenas to all of the companies for documents, and all of them, including Chevron, produced billing records and emails and et cetera. So with respect to documentation requests, they were cooperative. When it came time to interview, indiv uh, you know, do individual interviews, uh, Shell, uh, Gary Williams and Hess made, made their employees available. Chevron obtained outside counsel who, who, then, who then did not make those employees uh, available. So Chevron, the lack of cooperation by the Chevron and Shell employees slowed down your investigation. It did. It did not allow you to get all of the information which you needed in order to make a definitive and final set of conclusions with regard to what was going on. That's true. That is true. Uh, did the uh, did the uh, uh, did Chevron then demand that the uh, employees there no, no longer have any uh, connect any uh, uh, work relationship with the Department of Interior? I, I don't know anything about that. Should they uh, demand uh, and should the secretary? Those Chevron employees not any longer have any uh, relationship with the uh, Department of Interior in, with, re, with regarding to any of the matters that we are talking about in the uh, leasing area. Well, I would I would hope that uh, Chevron might do an internal. No, I'm not asking that. They're not doing it. They're not cooperating. No. Chevron is not cooperating. I'm asking you, what do you think the standard from the Department of Interior should be with regard to these five employees? Should they continue? to uh, have business as usual in representing Chevron at the Department of Interior? Well, there are some, there are some suspension and debarment possibilities here for both, um, well, obviously for the company, which... Uh, well, what is your recommendation in terms of uh, keeping a, uh, you know, an arm's length distance now between these employees uh, and the ones that, uh, and, the, uh, and the agency? Well, I'm, uh, you know, I'm charged with oversight over our employees, and I'm satisfied that we're on the right track. 
I wish I had the same oversight and authorities with outside entities. I don't. So you still don't know the full extent of what's going on at MMS because you haven't been able to do a complete set of interviews of these former employees or existing employees, in this case, at Chevron. I would say that it's incomplete because they didn't make themselves available, yes. Now, to your knowledge, were any oil company executives aware at any point that their company's employees were engaging in these illegal, improper, or unethical actions with Interior Department employees? Well, I think that the actual representatives ranged in rank. I don't know where the executive level is, but I don't think it went too high. I think these are essentially market people that deal with our folks at that level as well. I don't think there's – certainly they're not corporate executives of the corporations. The Justice Department has thus far declined to prosecute any of the current Interior employees involved in this scandal. Decisions to not prosecute are based on many factors. One is the culpability of the persons involved, but another is the ability to obtain a conviction. Do you think that had the companies been more cooperative and not shielded their employees from providing evidence to you, that you or the Justice Department might have uncovered something worthy of prosecution? It's hard to tell, Congressman. But it's possible. Is it not possible? Sure, it's possible. So what do you recommend then as a course of action if the basis of your testimony today is that you don't have enough information because the oil companies aren't allowing you to interview the witnesses so that you can make a recommendation as to how we make sure that there is proper accountability? What do you recommend? Well, we discussed that whole issue with the Department of Justice, and I've been doing this for a long time, and this isn't the first time I've been disappointed by decisions made over there. It probably won't be the last. When you say disappointed, what do you mean? It means that I would have liked a more aggressive approach, and I would have liked to have seen some other people prosecuted here, but that's not my decision to make. I get to decide what to investigate. They get to decide who to prosecute. So what is your recommendation with regard to how we now deal with Chevron and their existing employees who you have not interviewed and this former Shell employee that you have yet to interview, given the fact that you don't have to be Dick Tracy to figure out that they are the ones that might have the information you need and make a definitive recommendation as to what type of action should take place? What should happen? Well, once again, I wish that, well, first of all, there is a discussion about how we would reach out to those companies. I'm probably not the best person to do that, but certainly the Office of Government Ethics is a possibility, maybe some folks from the Ethics Department with Interior, and to make sure and to put our marker down as to what our expectation is, not only of our own employees, but with their employees who are doing business with us. I think there are some suspension debarment considerations we could give to the employees. So I think there's a variety of things that can be done, and I would think that as the Secretary goes about his lessons learned process that some of those issues will come up. I would certainly stand ready to help him with that. Well, I've sent a letter to the CEOs of those two companies because I believe that the taxpayers have a right to have these answers from Big Oil. I think they have a right to know what happened to the money that rightly belongs to the taxpayers of our country. This is something that goes right to the heart of accountability in terms of tax evasion, and I don't think that we can rest until we have gotten to the bottom of this. I thank you, Mr. Devaney, for your work and for all of the people who work for you. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The gentleman from Colorado, Mr. Lamborn. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Savage. Mr. Savage, you're up. Thank you, Your Honor.